Hey, rioters, we're going to finger the pulse. Thank you, Jordan Klepper, of evil with our cursed crew. How does Ubisoft fuck up a pirate game that they already made once? And we perform some wonders and miracles as a thaumaturge. Join us for episode 185 of Indie Game Riot. <laughs> I'm joined by Revan Vance yet again for episode 185 hey, hey. of Indie Game Riot. We're talking about some, uh, we're talking about the Thaumaturge, Cursed Crew, The Pulse of Evil. Those are the games we got coming up on the docket, as well as some indie news injection. Uh, but first, a reminder that uh, Indie Revolution Expo is happening in May. Game submissions, the registration is open, so go do it as soon as you can to get your spot. Um, are you showing the logo? <laughs> you even highlighted yes, it in the show notes. Well, yeah, and I'm scrolled down on the show notes, and, I, and it's not there. So. But yes, there's the Indie Revolution Expo. It's coming up in just a couple of short months. There's we need presentations. We need games to show. We want to show. We want to stream for 12 hours for three days. Okay. Ooh. So like, like that's that that was that was us at our peak. We'd like to hit that at least. Uh, it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's completely free to have your stuff showcased. If you don't want to participate outside of something like uh, like 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 just sending us your game trailer and 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 anything like that, that's fine. We're also going to be working with uh with a Discord team uh to potentially shut set blah, 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 to potentially set That's up exciting. like little digital booths you'll get your own dedicated channel uh on a rotation on a schedule uh so you can interact with people and show people video in there while we're streaming on twitch and and all that fun jazz we're gonna have live gameplay we're gonna have giveaways all that fun jazz but we need you to spread the word uh, and you to sign up. Uh, we may need some volunteer moderators uh, if we can get our stuff uh, set up correctly. Uh, we're also going to, uh, you know, need games to show. And with all of that, we're also running the IRX Jam. Mm. Uh, so you get a chance to make a game. Once you do, you get like, what is it, a hundred dollar prize if you if you're the the, the winner. Hundred dollars, you get uh, a T-shirt. And yep. uh, just some some feedback from us if you'd like. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good time. Uh, and your game gets your the the game jam games will get showcased. Uh, so go to indierevolutionexpo.com. Sign up for uh, or presentations you could go, too. Yeah, sign up to give a, a a talk, a presentation. You got something that you want to? Hey, I learned how to do this really cool trick in uh, Godot. You know, like. If you want to, there you go. If you want to talk about how indie games make pirate games better than Ubisoft, <laughs> there you go. Like, like you can you can do that. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a time block. There are limited slots. We do like to have them all filled, but we will try and and we will try and work to your schedule. Um, so yeah, indierevolutionexpo.com. You can sign up to show share your game. You can sign up to to give a talk. You can all of that fun jazz. Totally up to you. Check that out. Uh, if Preach. We... Go. Do it now. It's free. Uh, what else is free is that your uh, your weeks are free for me. I don't know. I'm going somewhere with that. How have you guys <laughs> <I don't>... been? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Indie Game a... Riot, new people. <laughs> I, I pissed out a, 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 a rock... I hope it was a diamond. No, it was a, it was a kidney stone. You that was fun. Turn it into a diamond. Yeah. No. Oh, you know, when when you get really really famous, uh, indie game riot gets more and more famous. You just keep that. You sell it. Sell it on. You sell out my kidney stones. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. that. You too can own this compressed thing of calcium oxalate <laughs> and uric acid. You've heard of mm. you've heard of gamer bath water. You've heard of oh farts. boy, girl, oh bro. Wait no, until no, you no. wait. <laughs> Wait until you get a hold of podcaster kidney stones. <laughs> it's got to be the new best, big thing. I, 
podcast or kidney stone. If you pay for <laughs> just that. yours for. <laughs> so, oh we my can god! Start, okay, we can start moving on. Putting extra I'm salt get... in revs. No, 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 no. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. This is getting gross now. Like, well, I'm you starting know... to gag and like. <laughs> right, well, you know what? It'll calm your stomach. Uh, a nice dose of Indian news injection. <laughs> And today on Indie News Injection, uh, first thing we're going to talk about is that Eggnut, the developers of the Tales Noir games, are calling it quits. Um, they uh, apparently uh, just don't have the money uh, to keep going, and uh, that is a feeling I know quite well as an indie game developer. I, I imagine a lot of you do who are out there making indie <laughs> games. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sad chuckle, not a like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You 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 gotta laugh so that you don't cry sometimes. That's just the way the world is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is um, it's an unfortunate situation. Another um, another uh, another one bites the dust, I suppose. Just amongst and, all the amongst all the jobs being lost, it just the. Uh, it sucks, especially yeah. when it's an indie studio. Um, yeah. So I mean, they uh, they've been around what since 2017. Mm -hmm. um, they had 15 employees that now have to go find jobs. But I mean, at, at least in this, it sucks that they're closing down. But it feels it's it's bad in a different way because the other ones feel more nefarious because of fucking corporate greed. This one just sucks. Um, yeah. And and I will say pretty good I was. Too. I will say, like, mad props to them uh, because they're ceasing development immediately and they're using all of their remaining funds to give their team paid time off. You know, like they're going to severance, essentially, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and be a, a, a positive <laughs> reference forward for them. So just uh, to quote to quote their final uh, final paragraph. That they've been at it since 2017. It was great to have you by our side. The world is on fire. The game industry is fucked. Call your mom. Uh, very poignant, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So I was, uh, uh, I was gonna, gonna say that, you know, this is, you know, we're obviously uh, highlighting Eggnut on this, but this is, all jokes aside, seriously, the experience of a lot of uh, indie so developers people. and indie games. Oh. Um, that, that, you know, and it's, it's not anybody really pushing you out. It's the, you know, highly competitive nature. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's more, it's more, uh, um, I guess interesting at times to focus on, you know, people being like pushed out by mega corporations or whatnot. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on Indian News Injection. Yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> You know, this sort of experience is what it, what Eggnut's going through is really most <laughs> people's experience when they go out of business in, as indie games. So um, if there's an indie game company out there you like, you know, do what you can to support them. Because don't think anybody else is doing it because they're probably not. Yeah. Yeah. If you get, do you remember Rev um, uh, Poncho? Yes. The devs, they talked about how... He was basically homeless uh, after, after yep. doing that game. And that was a really good game, by the way. Um, they, they it was won, an amazing game. Yeah, they won some awards from us, I believe. And, uh, man, it sucked. But but the cool thing is, that at least for them, uh, they made a comeback a bit with another game called Change, you know, that had to do with their experience being homeless and um, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is definitely not all puppies and sunshine in the game. Uh, in the industry, uh, as as Vance knows himself, um, it can be rough. But uh, thankfully, Vance isn't homeless at this point. <laughs> not uh, yet. Yeah. yeah. Not yet. Um, yes. Yeah. So, uh, on a lighter note, hopefully, um, Magwest is uh, coming September twenty seventh, twenty seventh through the 29th to San Jose, California. For those you don't know, um, MAGFest is like the main event for them, uh, which takes place in, I, would, I guess, D.C. technically. Uh, it's it's like on the border of D.C., Maryland, yeah. or whatever. Um, 
But uh, it's a really good time. I've been there a couple times, once for as Indie Game Riot Press and once for uh, helping um, uh, a game that I was, I was doing some kind of work for on the side um, to show off their game there. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. It, it's out of... I haven't been to that many conventions. I mean, I've been to some mostly as Indie Game Riot Press. Um, but it, it's definitely the one that has felt the most like a party. Everyone there is just for a good time. I've never come mm-hmm. across... I mean, there there have been some d- jackasses. I think the one year there were people that did, like, damage to the hotel, which MAGFest is unresponsible for. Um, that kind of stupid shit, which I guess in the party atmosphere you kind of have to expect, which sucks. But um, they really do have a good time and it's it's loose there but at the same time they understand not everyone there is the party animal they have things like the afk room which uh take this.org sponsors and um for those you don't know them we've had a bit of a connection with them through um, a couple of people that have been on the show um Mm -hmm. really good organization for mental health in the game industry and uh things like that and 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 when i was there promoting that game um you know, I met, you know, you remember Dean, uh, who made uh, Vid- Vidar. Um, yep. You know, people like him were there as well, and I got to meet them face-to-face, but they were super kind and generous because, like, things like uh, we forgot um, a TV monitor to show off the game uh, or something like that. I forget, or maybe it broke. <laughs> or maybe it broke. Yeah. The point is that we didn't have it. me about that. And he gave, us, he gave us a spare that he had, you know, and that's the kind of, that was the kind of attitude that everyone really had, uh, at least amongst the indie devs there. It was just a really good time. Um, cool panels, uh, really good, you know, picking of, of indie games and, and a really nice artist alley, I guess you could call it. Um, so yeah, mag West, maybe, uh, maybe Rev can go if he has the time and money, um, and yeah. to represent indie game, right. And, and talk to some indie devs. So head out that way and, uh, yeah, check it out. For sure. Uh, moving right along uh, from positive to kind of negative, uh, anybody who's worked in the game development cycle at any point knows that your first couple of days are like make or break for your game. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter how long you've been working on it. It doesn't matter what your budget is. It doesn't matter if you are indie or double A or triple A or <clears throat> quadruple A. <laughs> uh, then like like your first couple of days determine whether or not you have an audience. Uh, and a lot of that is dependent on the algorithms that are chosen by companies that try to make things as generally I I think in general they try to make things fair Uh, unfortunately uh, when a megacorp can just drop 11 games at once and trigger a massive wave of nostalgia for Command and Conquer on Steam a bunch of other really good games that really deserve attention get bumped out of the best opportunity to be discovered um you know there's a uh, potions a curious tale it's a little adventure crafty game about a witch creating her potions she's been working on they've been working on that for 10 years uh and all of their marketing and everything was building up to their release day and ea surprise dropped 11 11 games in the Command and Conquer series and bumped them completely imagine, out. Imagine 10 years of work. Not going down a drain necessarily, but just yep. being hampered that bad by some bullshit. So, I, I mean, really, though, what what Steam... It's hard It's hard to blame Steam, but at the same time, I feel like... Yeah. I feel like Steam knows, you know, that wishlisting and getting on that particular list of, of new releases and being in front of people for as long as you can. The new and trending is so, so critical. important that they should have been like, all right, look, we can put a Command & Conquer game there, whichever one you want, whatever you want to really push. Everything else is going to be uh, not delisted, but like not on not that list. Not there. Right? Yeah. Like Do a people... splash page that takes you to the Command & Conquer page. Yeah. Could have been. Like, like Ren- Renee, the, the developer, uh, she said like it, it she had to work full time jobs while she was developing this. This she, she put ten years into this and you know, like, like it meant so much to her. And she drops it 
and away it goes. And then, and like, that's not the, the only one. Like, there were a bunch of games that released that same day. Berserk Boy uh, also launched five years in development, and they went, huzzah, we're on the new and trending, we've got all of this thing, and boom, that drop happens, and now they don't appear, they're they're below the fold. Uh, mm. but, uh, and, and it's just like, you know, we know it's not malicious, it's just an algorithm, but... Yeah, and EA, as it. much as we like to shit on EA, they didn't do it on purpose. You know, they were like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, let's finally take these bastards out. No, they just were like, they just did it without thought. And and yeah. there really should have just been mm -hmm. some human somewhere that could have been like, all right, let's just, you know, like, and, and the thing about, I mean, I know people weren't getting like notifications, but it's the same way people like blowing up your phone. Like, do we really need, you know, 11 different messages about the same thing. You could have put this in a longer message, you know, or emailed me if it was really that long of a thing, you know, something like that. It's just, I don't know. It was unnecessary to do it the way it happened. Um, yeah. And it could have been handled better and it sucks. And, and like we mentioned before with, uh, um, with uh, Tales Noir, support the devs so shit like tales noir doesn't happen where they go out of business and he said uh, at the end of that article um one of the one of the developers said uh something that is is very true is, is that always keep in mind when uh you know an indie game uh succeeds or or fails just how much luck went into that because you can make mm -hmm. a great game and nothing will happen Yep. Right. I mean, it's the same as any art, right? I mean, if you're a singer, if you're a, a painter or whatnot, you can make something amazing and and have it completely flop because it doesn't get in front of any eyes. So you, yeah. you can't art can't succeed if people don't see it. And until, that's you know until that's you die and then stage. everyone's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was going to tell a, a brief story because this really reminds me of something that happened to me um, when I was uh, I had a game. The release date was coming up soon. And some company decided that they were going to have a big Steam event featuring um, independent adventure games. And there's a, they set the date at exactly the same date that my game was set to release. Oh, no. And mm. did not include me in it. And I wrote them a message and I said, hey, you know, you just set this like immediately when my game is going to release. Can I at least, you know, have my game in, in the event? And no answer not even not even a response so uh yeah that sucked i mean <laughs> oh. mm. sort of us you know so all kinds of things can happen to just come along and blindside you know this ea thing is just one of them it's exactly. just <laughs> yeah um i'm sorry to to the devs that got screwed over by this um but hopefully i mean it seems like that at least at least potions of curious tale the game that kind of opened all this discussion up um they're at least getting attention that way you know through through word yeah. of mouth through social media and all that stuff through these articles so i hope that uh, there's some kind of reconciliation th that way um for their games as well crossing my fingers for you guys yeah um and uh that it's not all shit for you <laughs> um ea you know i know you didn't do this on purpose but fuck you anyway because you're ea and you're evil um, exactly. for everything else that you've done. <laughs> but so, thanks for Command and Conquer. So <laughs> yeah, thank you for Tim Curry in Command and Command and Conquer. That was that was uh, one of the few good things you've ever done. Um, uh, you know what? This all makes everyone so angry. I think we should start a riot. This week on Starting the Riot, we are talking about the Thaumaturge. Th Thaumaturge? Thaumaturge. 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 I don't um, know how to pronounce that. I'm, I'm really pronouncing it Thaumaturge. <laughs> um, but the, I guess it's, what, do you, what would it be, like Polish for for um, for Miracle Worker or something like that? I'm not sure. Miracle Worker, uh, Wonder, and yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically, this is a, uh, I guess you could call it kind of a, a cosmic. A magician. Uh, thriller. I w it definitely has some some uh, Arkham type, you know, the Cthulian 
type of feel to it. Um, but it's it, instead of taking place in like the classic, like off the coast of Maine or Oregon or wherever the fuck, it's in uh, Eastern Europe slash Russia um, in the time in the time of uh, of uh, Rasputin. Uh, that's him right there, the man with the dick. It's in Warsaw. It's in Warsaw. Yeah, yeah, but that's Rasputin right there. Yes. And in this particular instance, they're in Russia. Um, so suck my Rasputin dick. Um, <laughs> anyway, they yeah. So you're this thaumaturge who is basically considered a miracle worker, but you can uh, see and talk to these uh, spirits, I guess. Uh, that stand around and like one of them is essentially I'm using the wrong terms, but I'm kind of putting it in the terms that I understand that most people would understand. These spirits are kind of like you're familiar and you can kind of based on a particular flaw that you have, they get attached to you. This man, the, the main character that you play as his, uh, his flaw is pride. Um, and, uh, you use the powers that you have to, Essentially, you have very good perception. Um, so the powers kind of tell you, oh, this item belongs to this person based on these emotions that you can detect from said item uh, that's laying around. And Rasputin is this uh, <laughs> healer, miracle worker, but he's not a thaumaturge. It's kind of confusing, to be honest with you. But I am really intrigued by by the story and the, the atmosphere of it, too, the, the whole setting. Um, especially consider Rasputin, like... He's he's generally considered not a good person, right? Like, am I getting my? Uh, I, he he was definitely fucking weird. I know he was weird, uh, but I'm not sure if he was like really like a dictator. The, the most the the best that like canonically, like like the most canonical version of him, I think for me comes from the animated movie Anastasia. Yeah. Um, well, he was definitely evil in that. But, yeah, yeah. No, he was he was I mean he was a, he was a he was a wizard basically. Like yeah. like he he was trying to be uh Merlin to uh to the Russian leadership to the right. czars. Um and uh in this particular yeah. game though, he is not yet taking leadership of Russia. He's just traveling around town to town uh helping, I guess. Uh, I'm not again, I'm I I haven't gotten so far into the story to like figure out if he what his intentions really are, but he it ends up you know you prove yourself to him and he ends up helping you uh, during your journey because you do eventually end up in Poland. Yes, um, I I mean the the game is set in Warsaw in 1905 yeah. Yeah. where Russia basically owns it at that point. So right, right. so it's um, Russia. There, there's a lot of. Poland. <laughs> Poland is not Russia. <laughs> in this game, Russia owns Poland, so therefore it's Russia. They're, they're still in Poland. Um, anyways, <laughs> Poland's like split up between like three different countries at, at this point. Fair, fair. Um, okay, um, but anyways, yeah, like you're you're like, like there's a lot of politics uh, uh, involved, uh, not just like like the russian soldiers and the polish towns people and merchants and and all of that like like there there's there's other forces at work and then you have the spiritual aspect hence mm -hmm. the thaumaturge um yeah. so where yeah so so as you're going through this game the the as regarding the mechanics um there is an investigation aspect to it where you use your powers like i said to uh connect clues based on your perception powers. Um, you can then, once you connect the dots, you can solve various problems. You can make choices, uh, depending on your, you know, how you choose things, people will react differently. It does change the game. Um, for instance, in the beginning, there is a woman, or there is a, um, a murder in the town, and I won't give away like exactly what happens there, but there is a murder in the town, and as you're, you're trying to figure out uh, who committed this murder and why? Um, once you once you figure it out, um, you discover that this person is being manipulated by another. I actually forget the word for it. Actually, you're seeing it on screen right now. That that particular saluter. Yeah, a, a salutor or something like that. Yeah. Um, that uh, so that's his right there, the one that's standing next to him. But there's another one that's that's fucking with the town, making everyone really paranoid and aggressive, and they're fighting each other. 
And uh, once you figure it out, you go in and fight this thing uh, with your particular salutar. Uh, or I hope we're not pronouncing that right. Uh, <laughs> with uh, your thaumaturge powers and, and things like that. And the combat is interesting. It's turn-based. Um, so you it's you and your spirit. And uh, I'm assuming eventually you know, there might be other people that you can... You know, I believe with, so. Uh, against yeah. whatever other group, and you know, you take turns, and it kind of has this timeline aspect, kind of um, in the in the vein of like Baldur's Gate, where you know, people depending on your uh, speed or your um, initiative or whatever you want to call it, uh, where you're gonna you know hit at, but there's a, a strategy to it where you can your your turns take different amount a different amount of time, so you're like, okay, should I do the stronger attack that takes longer to do to do it? Or should I do something quick? Should I do something that interrupts? Should I do something that heals? That sort of stuff. Um, and then you eventually take over that uh, particular salutor. Um, and there's even like an RPG system where you can upgrade various uh, various skills that help you uh, help your powers become more useful and, and things like that. Think of think of this game like uh, kind of like uh, uh, Persona. I never like, like it's very oh, okay it, it's it's very it, in, instead of being a bunch of high schoolers in japan in the 21st century <laughs> your middle-aged rasputin your your middle-aged your middle-aged persona collector uh in 1905 you know um but it is it, it you know like i i think one of the 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 biggest complaints that i've seen about this and it it kind of rings true is that it gets a little bit repetitive um but like i'm, I'm seeing like people going like yeah it's repetitive but i'm well, still having fun and then i have other people that are going like yeah it's super repetitive and i, I like, hate I that mean, I, I, there could be you know it could be repetitive i guess but like the game, yeah. the combat, I feel, is secondary to the story. This is definitely oh, a for sure. Yeah, this is this is narrative game, yeah. a narrative RPG so you, first. You're not playing it for the combat. It's kind of a means to an end to me, and that may maybe that's good or bad. I don't know, um, but I like good narrative in a game, so that's really what draws me in. So the the repetitive combat and things like that, I don't care really. Well, I mean, narrative is important. I love narrative in games, but like if the combat is not fun then maybe they should remove it and uh I only have the narrative i, I, I haven't find it i haven't got a chance to play it so i don't know if it's really not fun or not i mean i think so. it's fun it, it like repetitive also doesn't fun. mean doesn't mean not fun either it's just yeah uh like i said it's just you know you're just it's, it doesn't change up a whole lot but again there's a strategy to it in your you you select moves uh which you can also like add things to and upgrade them and uh, there's strategy to the combat I, so I, I find it hard to be so repetitive. I, I find it hard to believe that it's so repetitive that you can't have fun with it. Like there's definitely ways to have fun, and and it, yeah. again, I think it's secondary. So if you are someone who is into a narrative first game, you can you can definitely overlook that the the combat maybe not being like top tier combat in a game. Um, I mean, it's it's turn based combat. That's you know. It, yeah. It, to me, it's not. It's it's no more repetitive than like Final Fantasy X. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I know. Love, I, I, yeah, I love I, it. I, I love that. So yeah. Yeah. I love turn based <laughs> combat myself. So I mean, I don't know what exactly people are saying is repetitive about this particular turn based combat. But if they're, I believe it's more. I believe it's more the. I believe it's more the the quest aspect. Uh, it, after the first few hours, people are saying like it, it feels, but they also you know take that with a grain of salt. Uh, I do want to share like my two favorite reviews. I went through a ton of reviews on this game. My two favorite reviews. Uh, my first one is I catch Pokemon with Rasputin. I shoot three guys in front of the cemetery, then attend my dad's funeral. I pet dog. Good game. <laughs> And then yeah, that's how the game <laughs> starts, really. That's the <laughs> and then my favorite one is Schizo Dude uses imaginary friends and beats up on the mentally ill to take their imaginary friends. Also, communism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, they're not far off. To be, yeah. That's... Like, like it's great. Yeah. Um, I will say this game is uh, it, it is a tad pricey. Like, like I'm gonna move move us along right now. Uh, it is for me currently thirty five dollars. 
uh, on Steam, uh, which, but I'm also seeing it's a relatively long game, so that could definitely be worth it. Uh, I don't have any problem doing that. You can get it and uh, Frostpunk for $36 because, because <laughs> right they're now. from the same, same publisher. Because the think. same publisher, yeah. Um, um, developers even, the de even the deluxe edition of, of Thaumaturge is only 40 bucks. Yeah. Honestly, I think $35, I think that's a good price point for this game. Um, yeah. No, like, just given its scope and, and scale and and the, 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 the story that goes into it, uh, I'm, I'm. I think it's fine. I just know some people, <clears throat> Josh, can be a little bit uh, price conscientious. I another thing I'd like to point out about this game um, is that I appreciate that the character that you play as isn't like this almighty like. Oh yes, the hero saves the town, and he does do good things and helps the town, but he does it in ways that are shady uh, you know i mean specifically it uses the word like the one of the main things you do as a thaumaturge is manipulate people um through through your through your narrative and, and dialogue actions and things like that um and it's like for instance like one of the very first things that you do is okay i gotta go from this town that you're seeing right now to a graveyard with to meet rasputin and the guy that drives a carriage between areas is like, eh, I'm tired, man. I, I've been driving for like a day straight. I need to take a rest. And you manipulate him into like, into like, all right, well, I guess I'll take you. And it's like, well, man, let the, let the dude, the guy just went through the mud and snow to, from, to take you to this town in the first place. And you won't let him just to have a, have a breather. You know, it's things like that. So the guy's not like totally, totally on the up and up, at least at this point, it seems. Um, and, and I think based on some of your, your choices too, he could really probably be, be a very flawed person. Um, which I, you know, I always appreciate in these narrative games that it's, it doesn't take the, mm -hmm. the cliched road every time. So, uh, yeah. Anything else on the Thaumaturge? These guys are great. I want to see more from them. Their, their previous game as Fool's Theory uh was uh was seven that was a that was a really good game um and i want to i want to see more i i really do uh they they've got some chops they they've worked on some big games and keep seven doing pretty cool, what though. you're doing I never, yeah i never played that but it does look pretty cool um all right well you know uh what time it is easter Peep, yes, peeps. Easter. Peep show, peep show, peep show, peep show. And we're talking about Curse Crew. I mentioned, uh, sorry, it's Peep Show. And <laughs> uh, I, so I was about to launch into a rant again, and I, I couldn't. So pirates are awesome. Uh, and, and I'm on Team Ninja, if anybody thinks about this. Uh, you remember the game, uh, I don't remember its title now, it's the Spaceship One, you're going through the, anyways. Uh, Why is it shit, is yeah. FTL. The FTL, yes, thank you, God. Uh, this is, this is very much a, uh an ftl but like in a pirate universe and it's really cool mm -hmm. uh it's roguelike you're it's a, a crew management uh it is super detailed i will say it is probably overly detailed uh in some cases uh i've, I've played this for like 20 30 minutes uh you know just trying to get a feel for it uh work kind of fucked me over this week and, uh, and, and like, I just, I, I couldn't get anywhere. Uh, I think I successfully traveled to a spot, but it does not explain like any of the mechanics in, in this game. Uh, and that is my biggest complaint for this. Right? Like you get your little journal options and you can be like, oh, you know, like I, I found new crew or I took something up. Like I burned my ship to the ground because I accidentally tried opening a box <laughs> and uh, it blew up and set me on fire 
and it is we all die. Very died. easy to die in this game. I noticed it's uh, yeah. It, it, it's very it's difficult. very FTL. It is very FTL in its in, in its uh, abilities, but like you get a little bit more control. One cannonball is all like, it takes. Yeah, uh, in the wrong spot, man. Yeah. Uh, the 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 first enemy that I saw, I had moved my gunpowder up onto deck because. I needed it closer because I only had one cannon and I needed to be able to reload faster. And they like targeted it. Like like my barrels of gunpowder just nonstop, just targeted just that, nothing else. And I blew up and sank. I've died like four times in 30 minutes. It, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm dumb, uh, <laughs> but it is fun. I love the art style for this. I love the, I, I love the music. It is early access. I will say that. So hopefully they get a bit more of a, uh, like, like a tutorial going through, um, you know, take a, take a lesson from your predecessors, uh, some crackle of these, work. Some of these things uh, I, I, uh, I, I really, cause you're talking about the art and stuff like that. It's kind of like a cross between, um, some of the clay stuff like like don't starve and yeah. a little bit of uh do you remember the game we need to go deeper yes a little, yes. little bit of that too um which is so it's really cool it's like it's almost like papercraft uh style too like some of the, with the waves yeah. and how that all works um another mechanic too that you didn't mention was the it's it's a little bit of a base building game too you know you're managing the crew but you also are upgrading managing your ship and managing your ship and inventory and all that sort of stuff uh, so it's it's like FTL with you know on on steroids almost because it's got the FTL yeah. map and the roguelike aspects of FTL, um, but with a lot more mechanics built into the you know from from situation to situation that you have to take care of. For sure, and it's it is like, it. like. What are you saying, Ben? Go ahead. Oh no, I was no, I was just going to say uh, you know what you said before about about it. I mean, it sounds like it is uh, roguelike in a very real sense, in that rogue is a brutal game. It, mm -hmm. you, you don't have any fucking idea what you're doing, and then you die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's basically the rogue uh, gameplay experience. You could be full health, and one stray cannonball during a during a ship fight, a ship battle, one stray cannonball is what takes you out, man. The game's over. Um, I, remember, I mean, I, I've never beaten FTL. It's a fun as hell. The game's fun as hell. I've never beaten it um yeah so I, it's and, and like i i am going to be putting more time into this to see if i can't figure figure it out like i I also want to give them like some mad credit right like they started off as mod makers for oh, yeah. for rim world yeah and went from rim making rim world mods to i think somebody... making a full Game. I think some of the AI uh, programming in this game they they carried over from RimWorld, and, and the AI in this game is actually pretty good. They do some things like um, you do have to micromanage some aspects, and hopefully you know that could change during early access. So like if you put a fishing spot, someone who's fishing won't stop fishing when the when the ship is being attacked, and it's like all right, come on, guy. Um, so you do have to micromanage <laughs> that. But they, if there is something that needs to be moved, you know, or if, if they're not doing anything specific, they do tend to be pretty good with uh, going and doing the thing that is most important. Um, and, and I think that's that's probably carried over from the RimWorld experience. Yeah, no, it's it, it's really solid. Uh, there there are like like the 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 skeleton of uh of this is is really solid um they do have a they do have a demo that is free and right now in early access it is twenty dollars um but like their roadmap they want like crew members to have individual traits that influence their behavior like oh i'm better at sword fighting or i'm better at putting balls in cannons uh i was trying to make a dick joke there but it flopped <laughs> ah. um, they're gonna add more bosses and stuff like already you have like uh the 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 flying dutchman for example mm -hmm. um the one the one thing that i wish was not as important uh and that's just because i hate the pressure of these things is the survival mechanics of your hunger sleep and morale like like i i 
everybody needs to stop putting those survival mechanics. They like, like pick one, maybe, but make it super easy for us to ignore. I, I don't <laughs> like to have to craft and cook food and just, you know, you know, just stop well, it. Well, the food, the food, um, the food in this game is less about like your own yeah. hunger and more just just inventory management because it's it's uh, you have a crew to manage. That's what it's really about. Right. It's, no, I, I I get it. They consume a certain <laughs> amount of food over over a certain amount of time. That's it. So it's not like you constantly have to feed them individually. Um, now the sleeping, on the other hand, that can get kind of annoying. I think in this game so far. Um, but it's not that I think that's it's not that bad. It's probably just something that you kind of have to get used to. Yeah, no, like I'm, I'm sure some people really you like appreciate this. I just want like. I'm, I'm and this is this is a personal this is a personal gripe. I'm tired of survival mechanics in every game. Like, like I don't need to just... manage my hunger and my thirst and my ability to feed my like. We just got like, off like a month-long survival game kick. I think you're just maybe a little much in here. That too. No, no I'm, I'm sure that plays a role. I'm I'm sure that that plays a role. But like, re, and, and this isn't this isn't directed at Cursed Crew, right? Like, you you guys are doing fine, and it works within your game. I'm just sick of it. Like, this is a general no holds bar. If I'm playing a first-person shooter, I should not have to worry about my fucking guy starving to death like like i'm i'm tired of it i'm done with it that's my biggest gripe about this game is that i have to manage survival aspects or my crew just dies or like i don't remember did they they mutiny if it's bad enough yeah. like like there is a morale you just yeah. yeah game game over your crew mutinied and killed you uh and and, and like like it sorry I, I like everything else about this game. I love like like the combat is fun. Uh, like like <clears throat> if, if the 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 customization and the uh, the the ability to like uh, like like the different ship types and their capabilities and what you could do. Oh, it's just it, there. There's a lot of detail to this, and I appreciate that. Um, it's just a fun game. Go check out the demo if you don't want to give them 20 bucks, but give them 20 bucks because uh, they're probably going to raise the price when this comes out because there's a lot to this game. Crackle Walk Games is the developer. Um, I, you know, and the, the other thing too, just speaking of all the games that we've covered recently, I was just thinking about this. Like, it's nice. I like the weeks that we can bring up games like this that don't have a ton yeah. of following yet. Because uh, then I can like brag later that it's because of us that they uh, <laughs> <laughs> indie game yeah. covered it and then they picked up like. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but no, re really though, I, I I like finding these little hidden gems and uh, yes, crew, I think is on a, a very good trajectory, considering that they've only recently, uh, as of February twenty sixth, came out in early access and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to all that they have to add and uh, good job, Crackle Walk Games. <sighs> you know, so you can spend more money on games like the Thaumaturge Curse Crew and all the games that we covered in in uh, any news injection. It, it, we're gonna have to throw in something there that uh, takes it easy on your wallet, a little a little bit of free fun. <laughs> Um, this week on Free Fun, we are covering the Pulse of Evil. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, yeah, it's a fun little game in which you uh, go into a mine. It's a top-down, um, what genre? I would say I don't know. It's a top-down, I guess, combat. Shooter? It's Count, what, yeah. it's well, it's a shooter eventually, but you don't even start out with a gun. But yeah, you do eventually get. Uh, is, I mean, it's like closest to like a twin stick shooter, but without. Yeah, shooting. yeah. So, yeah. Except I was playing it on the keyboard. But yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's yeah, there's there's shooting. You just have to wait a little while before you find a gun. At least I did. Maybe I was too stupid to find the guns earlier. Um, so you start out with an axe and you have to chop things. But you do you do find guns and then you use guns. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's. 
the thing that I would say, what I thought of when I was playing this game, is that um, it is a it is really good at um, representing the horror genre, right? It is not what I would call a horror game in the genre no. in the like game genre sense because it's not like first person boring jump scare shit but it the feeling of it is captures horror the feeling of horror um, there's definitely a suspense thriller yeah. horror feel to this it's thing got yeah. like, it's got it's like a it's like a homage to a lot of retro horror I mean, yeah. there's some there's some little bit of Resident Evil ish aspects to this. There's a little bit of um, some like those arcadey like uh, House of the Dead a little bit. And obviously, this isn't a shooter like any of those games, but it's it's definitely got little bits of aspect like you know between like with resource management and uh, just like you said the the whole just the feel of the game as you're. When you think of like a movie, a, a horror movie, what yeah. is the thing that really characterizes those movies more than anything is the feeling of having uh, limited resources that you have to uh, fiddle with um, in order to get work, which makes, you know, these monsters that otherwise might not even be threatening yeah. to like zombies, for example, like zombies are the least threatening thing ever. They move as slow as a snail, except when you, you know, put the characters in this environment, which they the, the, have the almost corridors. no resources to their name. Yeah. Cramped corridors yeah. have to fiddle with everything. This is why the inventory system in this is so genius. Yeah. And the... You have to fiddle with everything. You don't just like press an R to reload. No, no, no. You have to like go and into it, your and, inventory. And it doesn't pause either. Thing. Yeah, it doesn't pause. Uh, yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing pauses, and like, like the, the, like I appreciate the intricacy of the mechanics for this. Like, if you aren't facing the direction you're walking, you move slower. If you yeah. have something in your hands, you move slower. If you're backing up with something in your hands and facing the opposite direction, you move slowest still. Everything and like everything in the game it makes gets you important. not overpowered. It makes there is no yeah. There is no, uh, yeah. what do you call it? Um, there's no power fantasy here. There's, you know, it's it's you yeah. surviving, yeah. and that's it. And and the field view thing is really cool too. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really what is really good about great horror movies versus bad horror movies. And I think that is the number one thing that is the difference between the two is that great horror movies don't have overpowered monsters. They have yeah. underpowered heroes, mm -hmm. and yes. that that is what this game captures very well. I mean, like think, I, of, I, think of like think of a uh, Dead Space, right? I know it's not an indie game, but like that, yeah. that's one reason. I mean, the dude was the dude could stomp with the best of them, and there were definitely <laughs> weapons. I mean, but he was using weapons that were not meant for killing, right? They were meant for mining. This dude is not a soldier. It's the same kind of thing, and and I don't know. I, I, there's definitely they just did a really good job of taking pieces of well done horror games, you know, classic Resident Evil, like I said, and and you know, Dead Space, things like that that just little bits worked. And I don't know if that's they're necessarily inspired by those, but you can definitely feel feel similarities. Yeah. No, it's it it it, it fits within the, the the trope for that. Um I, like I I really appreciated this one. Um it is it is rather difficult. Um like, like I can't get past the vomiting bo monsters especially when they start throwing several of them at you. Mm -hmm. Um but like every run I'm getting better. One of the things that also I really appreciate about this is you keep your progress uh like like once you've killed a monster it's dead and when you die all of your shit drops there so you go you get a new character that's like oh it's my turn and you have to go through so you better hope you didn't leave a door open that you didn't clear yeah, all the monsters out first your, because... your stuff isn't in the middle of a bunch of things and it takes yep. you five more characters dying before you actually pick yeah. it up and it successfully <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So and 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 the monsters there there's enough variety in the monsters uh that I I appreciated that they all had different mechanical approaches. Um 
the and then the it, final one just... uses all of them at once, which is uh, oh god, definitely. Um, I, I, I did, did not defeat the final boss in this game. I, I, did, not <laughs> I did not get that far. I did not get that far. But yeah, no, it's it, it's really fun. I highly recommend it. The 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 audio design on this is so perfectly in tune with the feeling of the game. Like, like I loved that. Like, uh, like to me, it creeped me the fuck out. It was just, it was, it was, you know, it was great. To me, audio is arguably the most important aspect of a horror game. Um, yeah, I, I'm not saying it's the only thing that you need, but it's, it, it's, it's a big. Part without of good it, audio, yeah. it's you're unlikely that you're gonna have a good horror game. Um, <laughs> and I just want to point out too, this is made on the Godot engine. Yeah. So, I was really thrilled about that. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the... Uh, I, I don't know. I appreciate that because those are kind of the engines I like to support just because of the ease of access they, they give to people who mm -hmm. don't necessarily have the most experience in uh, developing, and it kind of just makes these sorts of experiences possible. So, yeah. Um, by the way, the developers of this game... Mad Nukin, Maroki, Yeremia, and Dave Brown 57. Uh, <laughs> so I guess they don't have a studio unless Mad's Games is their studio because that's listed as a publisher. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I, I believe this is also on Itch.io, by the way. Um, prepping the well, chat Mads says. Mad's Games some... is probably has to do with Mad Nukin, right? That's... Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Good detective work there, Vance. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> That's why you pay me the big bucks. <laughs> Pre prepping the chat said some good stuff is coming from the Godot engine. Um, he's recommending a game called Halls of Torment. Um, so there, there you go. Another recommendation if you're wanting to support that engine. Um, that's good to know. If you prep, by the way, if you know of any games that we should check out from this, uh, from Godot, feel free to send them by our way on the Discord or something. Um. Do you guys have anything else to say about the Pulse of Evil? No, it's great. You should go play it for yourself. It's free. Yeah. There you go. What do you got to lose? You know what else is free? Us. Uh, IRX. Indie Game Us. Yeah, the Indie Game Riot podcast is free, and as well as uh, IRX, Indie Revolution Expo. So <laughs> go register your games. Register for a panel talk, presentation, whatever you want to call it. Um We've had arguments about what to call it. We settled on presentation. <laughs> I, I bring that up again because because uh, too many games was I saw a tweet from them like uh, a little bit before the show saying that they were looking for people to do panels. <laughs> uh, so you know that's what made me think of that. Well, panels are multiple people having a conversation, not a single person giving a presentation. Right. Well, I mean, usually we, we, we've done we've done both. Like there's been a few where it's like three or four guys will jump, three or four devs will jump together or a team will come together and, and give it. So, yeah, yeah I mean, that's it's like a panel. if it's a team, that's a, a bunch. Well, a panel usually is not just one team working together either. It's like a selected yeah. group, not a group, but individuals from different aspects that are all on the stage together, giving their different perspectives. That's a panel. Yeah. Anyway, throw in the comments. What do you think? <laughs> it is. Uh, We're gonna yeah. call them presentations because that's what all <laughs> that's what we settled down. on. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Thesaurus. Um, <laughs> I don't know what we're yelling about. Come on, join the old men yelling <laughs> at this guy. Um, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, check that. Check out any Revolution Expo. Please uh, register as many as you can. Tell all your friends. Uh, so we can have the best time possible. Um, that said, if you uh, save some money doing that free fun game that we just talked about, uh, you could send your extra money our way. Support us financially through Patreon or on Twitch. You could subscribe. That's always appreciated. But otherwise, you can also just su support us for free by emailing us. Like I said, you can contact us with games to check out, such as Prep sending us the Godot stuff. Um, or uh, send news to us, things like that, to contact at IndieGameRiot.net. Uh, you can just chat with us if you want to. Uh, we're on Twitter and Discord, Twitter at IndieGameRiot. Discord, the link's below. That's not a, uh, a link that I can remember because it's bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I also, speaking of Patreon, by the way, I want to say thanks to Prep, uh, Preposterone, and Discreet Infinity for both uh, supporting us on Patreon. It's very much appreciated and has uh, has and will continue to go towards uh, things to support Indie Game Riot and Indie Revolution Expo. So thank you for that. Uh, oh, yeah. For those of you who are listening live to us right now, we do have an edited version that should come out the next day, a.k.a. tomorrow. Uh, AKA Wednesday. And uh, <laughs> those of you listening to the edited version, you can always stop by to check out our live recording sessions every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The only time zone that matters because daylight savings time. Oh boy. <laughs> Anything else? Any last words, gentlemen? Nope. Naproxen. All right. Uh,. Something about get yourself uh, some Easter, Easter eggnog. eggnog. Yeah. <laughs> get yourself some Easter eggnog. <laughs> some banog. Um, yeah, thank you. Say your goodbyes. Bye bye. Have a good one, folks. See you.